Gaia and Ubuntu to everyone. Um, I guess we are at our official start time. Uh, as, as I mentioned to some of you, we do expect that um, there will be people coming on a little late, uh, as typically happens. Here we got a few more people uh, right now. Um, so feel free, this first part, I'm inviting you to go ahead and um, turn on your camera if you like, and, um, and I will unmute people in just a moment here. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute everybody who's on right now, that's fine. Um, if you have noises in the background and you want to have your phone muted um, through most of this, that's fine. Just turn it on when you're going to speak. Um, but we're going to have a kind of an open conversation. Um, I think given the number of people who registered, if that many people show up, um, as I think about, yeah, I probably will have everybody muted for for most of it and then just unmute you as you uh, to, to kind of call on you uh, for your turn to speak. So we'll see how that works out. Um, but again, welcome to those folks just joining. If you want to go ahead and turn on your camera and wave and say hello, you can also open the chat window and type in a greeting. Let us know where you're calling from and um, Anything else you want to say there? Can you hear me now? Oh, oh hi. hi. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Okay. Great. So as we're uh, getting settled, waiting as people, you know, kind of make their way in, again, just um, there's going to be a meditation session kind of in See, the but from California, going back to California tomorrow. Oh, thanks, Eric. Hi, Nathan. Good to see hey. you. <laughs> hey, I'm Nathan from both California and Illinois and the world. <laughs> and the world. Yes. All kinds of places. Welcome, Mary. Hi. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm from St. Louis. Hi, Mary. Um. So we're going to do a minute, uh, ugh. need to remember how to speak. Okay, we're going to do a meditation session in the middle. So um, if you haven't already, you know, make sure that you're, you won't have any alarms going off on your phone, uh, mute your phone, turn anything else off that might be a noise or a distraction, uh, and get yourself settled in so you can be comfortable. Um, as you can see, this is being recorded. I'll be editing the recording from this and posting it on the Nova Sutras YouTube channel uh, probably sometime tomorrow. So you can either uh, private message me now in the chat or just contact me immediately afterward. Um, send me an email, novasutras at gmail.com um, if you don't wanna be included because I'll probably start working on it tomorrow morning. Um, welcome, Nancy. Great to see you on. So the general plan is we're gonna start with uh, some brief introductions, and then we're gonna go through some steps that are based on uh, the spiral journey from Joanna Macy's work that reconnects. Um, so we'll be starting with the chance to express some gratitude in a little bit. And then we're just gonna to touch in for a moment to really honor our pain in these challenging times. After that, we'll shift into a mode where we're learning and envisioning ways to create a better world. I'll tell you um, a little more about the Nova Sutras movement, explain a little about the meaning of the equinox and these terms we use in Nova Sutras, Agaya and Ubuntu. Then we might take some time for a little conversation related to the themes of the equinox if there's time. Uh, but in about 30 minutes, we'll fully open sacred space for this gathering by calling the corners and then starting a guided meditation. Uh, if you're not an experienced meditator, don't worry. I'll 
talk you through it, help you get into a calm meditative state. Then as we get right at the moment of the equinox for a few minutes, we'll all really be focused on reverence and loving kindness on Agaya and Ubuntu for the world. After the meditation, we'll have more time to talk about our experiences and our intentions for the coming seasons. Um, so first, I'd like to start with a round of introductions, just so everybody um, gets to say uh, who they are. And um, we're going to combine functions here a little bit. So I'm inviting you to um, turn on your camera if you can uh, when you speak. Then tell us your name. Tell us where you are not just the name of your town, but if you can describe your bioregion a little bit, just, um, just very briefly the main plant type or some other characteristic feature that defines the bioregion that you're in uh, to the best of your ability. Um, and then tell us one thing that you're grateful for right now. And I will actually, I realize I should type these directions into the chat, so give me a second here. Um, Okay, so uh, if you all know how to open the chat window, you should be able to see that now. Um, so I'm going to model it and then um, just we'll kind of go around. I'll, I'll say who should go next uh, based on what your screen name is. So my name is Michelle. I'm in Scotts Valley, which is near Santa Cruz, California, and I'm in the Coast Redwoods bioregion. And today I'm grateful for um, the new flowers that are just emerging on my favorite madrone tree. So, uh, Derek, are you ready to go? Sure. I'm Derek. I happen to be in Nashville, Tennessee right at the moment because I'm in a group of people that FEMA uses after disaster declarations to go in and get people registered for assistance. And as you might recall, tor uh, Nashville had a, a, tornado, a series of tornadoes uh, on March 3rd. And so we've been here now for two weeks trying to get people registered for federal assistance for that. Um, we're pretty much wrapped up and they're trying to get us home in case the airports get shut down in the next week or so. So we're leaving tomorrow morning to go back to California, which is where I live in South Bay, South San Francisco Bay, across the hill from Michelle. And um, although we can see the mountains from where I am, we're really on the plane that just comes right out of the bay. So uh, it's a lot of concrete and asphalt right now in terms of what is the ecosystem like. So there we go. Oh, one thing I'm grateful for. I'm actually very grateful to be alive in this moment because, um, and we can get, touch on this just a little bit more later but I'm really I've started my own business and I'm doing it as a gift and uh, trying to bring into the collective consciousness that this economy that has traumatized us all so much is based on scarcity and competition and I really feel we can live with abundance and connection and caregiving and what's going on in the world just in the last few days um, is really ironic that the authorities are telling us we have to isolate even more. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, that's not what's going to get us through this. What's going to get us through this is if we take care of each other and not isolate. So there's that perspective. All right. Thanks, Derek. Um, okay. Uh, how about uh, Jennifer, if you can just briefly give your name, uh, where you are, and one thing you're grateful for. Hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, I'm in Scotts Valley as well. Um, I'm kind of on the other end of our town in the Sand Hills. Um, little micro, there's all these little micro climates up in the hills, and there's a lot of uh, manzanita and chaparral and oaks 
Um, and I'm actually kind of right on the border of redwoods and oaks, so we get a little bit of both ecosystems here, which is pretty neat. Uh, I am very grateful um, that I have a computer and Zoom, and I was able to get everything typed in and um, and uh, and that we get to practice some Agaya and Ubuntu tonight. Thank you. Okay, how about Mary? Hi, um, so I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. I don't know exactly what my, how to describe my bioregion. It's very green. Um, Good. <laughs> we have lots of different kinds of trees. We have maples and um, I don't know. <laughs> um, but there are lots of buds on the trees right now and that I'm very, very grateful for that, for those little signs of spring. And last night um, I was hanging with some friends and it was around midnight and we stepped outside and we could hear all of the birds they were talking, it was like they were talking to each other. Mm. Um, and that was really just a beautiful moment to hear them and flourishing. Um, and yeah, I think that was everything. Thank you, Mary. How about Teresa? Hi, I'm, I'm Teresa and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri also. Okay. And um, I don't know how to describe my bio <laughs> area either. Um, we have pine trees in our area and um, um, just, I'm in a suburban, suburban neighborhood. So we have beautiful trees and bushes and they're just starting to, um, the daffodils are starting to come out and the crocuses and we're seeing a lot of, uh, uh, signs of spring. The birds are just going crazy with their song and it's beautiful here. Oh. And, uh, that, that's about all I can explain about it. And what I am grateful for is that I am around people who, are like-minded like I am, and I'm just happy to be here tonight. Okay, how about Nancy? I'm gonna yeah, let me uh, bring your computer or your yeah, camera back see. on. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Trying to get to the right. Here, let me see if I can do it for you. Oh no, I don't have that one. Sure. There we go. Oh, there you are. I'm okay. Hi. Santa Cruz. Uh, live not that far from Michelle and Jennifer. Really loved what she said there. Totally identified with it. And I'm similarly in the bioregion with it's really precious because we're right here in this tiny little sliver of a of a tiny delta of a very small river that there's just enough space for human beings. To live here kind of with the ocean on one side about three blocks from where I live and not very far the mountains and in the, in the beginnings of them with the beautiful with the redwoods and it seemed everywhere I looked today the first really sunny day in a very long time so grateful for the rain but in the sun with all that rain behind it there were flowers in every direction and I'm uh, grateful in my own life. I, we had some fire damage in November and we've been supported by loving friends for months now letting us stay in their various homes. And as of today, I'm informed by the electricians and others that in about 10 more days, we will finally be back in our own home. And right now I'm so glad to see your faces. So glad you're doing this, Michelle. Thank you. Really feels right to be in the Equinox together and be together thanks to the technology mm -hmm. together despite the orders to stay apart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Nathan. All right, here you'll get a two for one because I'm oh. I'm Nightingale. <laughs> I'm Nightingale. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's great to see you both. Yeah. So right now we're in Peoria, Illinois, just up the Illinois River from our friends in St. Louis. And our bioregion, I would say, is uh, Illinois is known as the prairie state, although that has been extensively modified for <laughs> corn and soybean fields, um, fortunately or arguably unfortunately. 
uh, very extensively modified. And I think Eastern temperate um, forest is another characterization relevant uh, to where we are within the natural world uh, defined by much more interesting and accurate borders than our political um, impositions. So things that I'm grateful for, um, life and connection, family and community. Glad to be together with you all tonight. Beautiful, thanks. And I, hi, I'm Nightingale and I'm uh, fortunate to be with Nathan tonight which I'm very grateful for. Um, so I choose to be, to be in my mind today and to take myself back to the place that I know so well. It's in the Great Rift Valley area in Kenya. Uh, that's just where I want to be right now, where when I look in the eyes of my heart, I see, uh, eucalyptus trees and I see uh, just many thorny trees and I see wild animals walking around and I see slithering snakes and I also see happy children running around very in a very very carefree way women carrying their uh, their farming items on their backs or you know just people in a carefree way just going to do their farming or their their work in their areas and that's what i imagine during this very trying time for us and the sense of community is what i'm very thankful for and i'm really thankful to be with you all tonight and then uh let's see we have uh maritza hello hi everybody <laughs> I am, uh, I live in Aspen, Colorado, and um, the area here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, there's lots of um, uh, evergreens and pine trees, um, lots of aspen trees, although no leaves yet, um, but um, the birds have been chirping amazingly the last few days. I am grateful for that and um, grateful to be here tonight with everybody. Thank you. And then, um, Jackie, have we heard from you yet? I don't think so. Oh, Jackie, are you there? Oh, she's in the chat saying hi. Jackie, do you want to tell us where you're from? We've got, um, it looks like your, your microphone should be working. Okay. Uh, do you want to just type in your responses then? And while Jackie's uh, filling us in on the chat, um, I'll let you know that we're, oh, she says she's from Cape Coral, Florida. Um, so if you wanna be thinking about how you wanna respond on the next round, um, I'm just gonna give us one minute each to very briefly say um, what's up for each of us in this crisis? What are, the, um, what are the things you're finding difficult or painful or scary? Um, and just to really honor, you know, you don't even have to get into specifics, but to really honor those, those feelings, those challenges uh, that we're experiencing right now. So um, in case you're not reading it, I'm just going to, uh, so Jackie says she's, yeah, Cape Coral, Florida, which is the Southwest Florida Gulf Coast, and she's grateful for beautiful weather and sunsets there. Thank you, Jackie. 
Okay. Um, so just to, to keep us on track, I'm actually going to keep time on this. Um, so uh, let's, well, I guess we'll just start in roughly the same order because it's easier for me to track visually. So Derek, if you want to go first and just talk about, sure. uh, talk about what's up. Yeah, so um, I kind of already took my minute as part of my introduction, so I apologize for that. But um, let me just present one other aspect of this, and that is um, for a long time I've wondered what it would look like to raise the consciousness or change the consciousness of the majority of people. And and I think that's what this this situation today is offering us, is a chance for people to step out of the economy and have to entertain themselves in some way. And I'm hoping that, especially if we are vocal, those of us who, who believe in community and, and taking care of each other, if we are vocal, that we don't have as much noise we're fighting against. We don't have as much distraction that we're going to be fighting against. And we may have a, the, probably the best chance ever to get people to look at the economy in a different way. Great. And uh, Jennifer. So. Hmm. So the current the current situation. Um, I am grateful that um, all the fresh food is really well stocked um, in my stores, and so my current thing is I was feeling like kind of like a sense of anxiety because I saw people going through kind of an evolution of reactions around me, um, and you could see evidence of it everywhere you went, and the um, that 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 sort of um, grasping, fearful. Um, uh, you could see almost like the, the emptiness of the shelves, you know what I mean? And, and the tension in the lines were just kind of like this, a little snapshot of this interior life of, of the scarcity thinking um, that's been a model for me. And actually was, it's almost like that is the, uh, anyway, I don't know how long to go on about it, but a model that I was raised with that was supposed to look like frugal. This is frugal. This is wise to just be really, you know, um, so I'm just grateful to have a different model. Thanks. And Teresa. Oh, unmute. Okay. I would like to see, um, people that have more than enough um, give to people who don't have enough. I, I would like to see a shift. Mm -hmm. I would like us to see a shift where they don't feel like they have to, but that it's so obvious and it's so easy and loving to help your neighbor out. And I'm already seeing that where we're having um, conversations with, oh, well, we can help you out with this. Well, it'll be easy to help out your business by giving gift cards and, you know, doing this and that. And they're coming up with all kinds of ideas already of how to help each other out, which we could have done this a month ago, but it just, it, it wasn't in the forefront a, a month ago. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this will expand. All right. And um, Mary, do you want to go next? For me, um, what's coming up right now, there's definitely some fear and um, a lot of with like the social distancing. Um, I've been home a lot more sort of in a forced looking inward. Um, and it's interesting how that circles around because I've I've been in a place before where I, I knew how to look inward and I knew to, how to listen to myself and I knew how to tap in. And then you kind of start to get comfortable and you forget and you go to work and you come home and you go through the motions. And so this has been forcing me to look within and to do the work that I've been avoiding. So I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, <laughs> you know, having a little trouble with it. Thank you. Uh, so 
So, um, Nancy, do you want to go next? I think she typed her response. Mm. I'm not seeing it. No, nope, sorry, I'm wrong. Okay. Um, well, let's uh, let's switch to um, how about Nightingale next? So, I <clears throat> I want to say that I'm I'm especially grateful tonight to be. Uh, to be with Nathan, and I know I mentioned that earlier, he, he's uh, working in the hospital most of the days uh, whenever he's not home. And so having him and to have him still be in good health is actually a thing to be much thankful for today than other days. Mm -hmm. And I'm also looking inwardly, looking at how we can more practice physical distancing and social um, uh, social togetherness or cohesiveness mm -hmm. and, and yeah so that's what I want to say right now even as I think about uh, very close and fa uh, family and friends who are across big borders okay and then um, Nathan do you want to go ahead and yeah so I'll divide it into three parts. The first is, I think, an immense opportunity to highlight ecological realities, which are uh, many times intentionally overshadowed or hidden by the, the false economic narratives. And the second part is that I'm in a bit of a reprieve here in Illinois, away from my job at the county hospital in Monterey, Monterey County in Salinas mm -hmm. and just thinking about what I left a few days ago and what I think I'm going back to in a few days. Yeah. And the third part um, are connections to people in Africa, specifically in Liberia, a lot of damage that was done from Ebola uh, psychologically and physically. So trying to be together with them, solidarity and do what we can to give some of our excess during this challenging time. Thank you. Okay, and Nancy, you wanna go now? Oh, you're, you're still muted. Okay, how's that? Well, now we can hear you and not see you. Now we got you fully. All right, go ahead. Um. I'm loving this. I really am. Uh, yeah, I, I've been surrounded these days with a lot of young colleagues, uh, climate activists, who have been very vociferous this week and caring for my husband and me as we're 78, and they're trying to do everything they can to protect us and be close to us and distance themselves help us and not be around at the same time. Um, and I'm feeling a reprieve from the intense busyness and the opportunity and reaching out and writing some stuff to put out the opportunity to take stock of where we are. The um, This is like a fractal of what we're actually experiencing on so many fronts in the climate crisis and will be for a long time now, but it's easy to ignore it. It's suddenly, it's right there. So it's an opportunity to try to speak into that mm -hmm. space. And I hear a lot of other people doing that and trying to, for one thing, in taking stock, take stock of how many people around the world are devoting themselves full time to dealing with the crisis and um, a set identifying all the things that are starting to change so that we can connect um, the successes and it's a chance we're just building a database and an inventory that has uh, kind of a global perspective but at the moment is focused on 
sorry, what's going on in the Central Coast right now, and hoping to connect up with where what's going on elsewhere over the country. And yeah. we're forced onto the internet, which is a good place to do that particular kind of connection. All right, thanks. And uh, Maritza, and am I pronouncing that right? Marixa, yes, Marixa. Okay. Marixa. <laughs> yes. So for me, I just I feel that um, what's really coming up is um, that I really do need to take the time to, like like Mary was saying, to uh, focus inward and take the time to do more meditations and mm -hmm. um, and be the example to others as well. Hopefully, um, it's really quiet here in town. Almost everyone's gone. It's a, resort place so oh, yeah. it pretty much it's it's dead it's dead and so we don't really get the craziness that i'm sure it's felt in other places but around here it's pretty peaceful and i'm grateful for that and um i really will take the time and uh put the effort in into uh going inward and 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 helping others in, in that manner if as much as i can Okay. Oh, and, and I don't think I've said anything yet, have I? Um, so uh, what's been difficult for me is um, in part, it's a little bit of just more than anything, I've just been hit with this. This feels so surreal that we're we're at this point in the crisis. Um, and I think that's partly just because I've been dispositionally focused on crisis a lot. Um, so, so to actually, you know, be in one uh, that's moving this rapidly is, is strange. Um, partly I'm, I'm just, there are so many things that I feel like, well, I know how to do this. So for instance, I know how to, how to set up these online meetings. I should be doing more of that. That's what people need right now. Um, and that is an intention I hold. And yet, you know, I have this anxiety around, okay, how, how many of these can I do? When can I do them? How do I get it all together? And um, how do I serve people the best that I can without um, going overboard and burning out and, and, uh, without losing sight of what's important and without taking that, that time to really, you know, sort of turn inward and process and, and be not only doing the things that serve people, but working on staying centered enough that I can be of best service. Um, and that's, I, I'm not a person who finds it easy to find that balance. So, um, so I'm really, I'm aware of it and it's adding to my anxiety in some ways. Um, so that's, that's what's true for me right now. Um, so I just want to, I want to thank all of you for, um, for talking about this, for your words, your presence, your concerns. Um, I think, you know, we all recognize this need and have, are holding this intention, I can hear it in everyone, that um, we are going to support one another through these challenging times. And um, probably, you know, we're trying to be more open to those lessons. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, and just to simplify things, I think I will uh, keep everybody on mute for a little while. Um, and I'll, we're now moving into, um, in the spiral of the work that reconnects, they talk about this as, as seeing with new eyes. Once you've acknowledged that, you know, there is pain and there is challenge, um, then it's time to start to think about uh, new visions for ways to face the challenge. And the way we're gonna walk through that tonight is first I'll tell you a little bit more about Nova Sutras for those who are less familiar. 
um, and also tell you a little bit about the equinox specifically and why equinoxes are important uh, to honor and recognize. Um, so I'm going to share some slides with you as I do that, because usually when I talk, I have slides. <laughs> um, so the idea with the Nova Sutras movement is to try to bring together science and spirituality. Um, we're really looking for ways to co-create practices that are going to celebrate the melding together of our rational, our emotional, and our intuitive selves, um, uniting those aspects of our human existence in full recognition of the beauty and the power of nature. In Nova Sutras, we celebrate the solstices, the equinoxes, and the cross quarters, which are the midpoints between them, because these are amazing planetary phenomena. Uh, they're about the interaction of the earth and the sun. It's science-based, it's something all humans can agree on. And there are many spiritual traditions that include some celebration associated with these eight times of the year, uh, what can, are known as the grand octal or the seasonal cusps. Right now we're approaching the precise moment of the March equinox. And in about, looks like 13 minutes, um, we will arrive at the specific place in Earth's orbit where our planet's equator is angled directly at the sun. At that moment, the sun will be directly overhead in the Malacca Sea. Uh, this is near the north of Sulawesi, the Sulawesi Island in Indonesia. Uh, that area is home of the indigenous Minahasan and Mandano peoples. It's part of what we refer to as Sundaland, uh, these Southeast Asian rainforests that are one of Earth's three green hearts. Uh, the equatorial rainforests that house most, uh, a lot of Earth's terrestrial biodiversity. And they're really important actually for shaping Earth's climate and weather patterns. Um, and you may know that um, that we've started a petition, uh, a new petition now to protect the Amazon rainforest. And I'll paste information about that in the chat in a little while. So the seasons are related to the orbit of the Earth around our sun and how the northern and sun southern hemispheres um, are sometimes tilted toward the sun and sometimes tilted away from the sun. The equinox is called that because it's the time of year when night and day are about the same length, no matter where in the world you are. Uh, everywhere, the center of the sun rises and sets 12 hours apart. Since the sun is a disk instead of a point, we all get a little bit more sunlight than dark on the equinox. North of the tropics, which it sounds like all of us are, this is the end of winter and the beginning of spring. The days are growing longer and in a lot of places, things are already emerging from uh, winter time. We're seeing new leaves and blossoms as these harbingers for the growing seasons to come. One of the things that makes the equinoxes so important in the Nova Sutras movement is that there are these times when everyone everywhere on earth is experiencing very similar things. These are the only days where the length of daylight is the same almost everywhere in the world. For everyone everywhere, the sun rises due east and sets due west today. Lots of ancient civilizations built structures or set stones to help, help them locate these directions and recognize the equinoxes. 
the equinoxes are really important times of change and movement. You have a lot of migrating species traveling from south to north to follow the sun. The equinox is this time when light and dark are in balance and yet they're changing quickly. So they're the pivot points of the year and they kind of remind us of the impermanence and constant change that defines our existence. In Nova Sutras, we choose the equinoxes along with the solstices and cross quarters to meditate together on two fundamental concepts, what we call a Gaia and Ubuntu. We use these terms as a brief way to express some fairly complex ideas. A Gaia is a new term and it's intended to express a joyous recognition of the deep sacred beauty of the universe. It's this feeble attempt to articulate the awe and wonder we experience when we recognize just the profound beauty and complexity of nature, whether it's the vivid colors of the first flowers of the season, the touch of a gentle breeze brushing your face, the scent of soil and air right after a rain when they're so fresh and alive, the sound of waves crashing in a storm. All of that's captured in a Gaia. Ubuntu is a term that we've borrowed from Southern African languages, and it represents community, mutual aid, interdependence, it recognizes that people need other people to thrive and to help us learn and improve. In Nova Sutras, we expand this meaning to embrace the connections between all things. Humans also can't exist without the life around us, the forests, the oceans, the grasslands, the rivers. These are what produce the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. And of course, as humans, we need that inspiration and joy of a Gaia that connects us to the beauty and wonder of the incomprehensible complexity of the living world, to find our place in the universe and to really thrive. So a Gaia and Ubuntu weave us all together in the more than human world with reverence, joy, generosity, gratitude, and loving kindness. Now, before we begin our meditation, we'll do a practice uh, referred to as calling the corners uh, to open this up as sacred space and time for each of us. This practice helps us situate ourselves and connects us to our place and to the beings around us, human and otherwise, all around the world. In Calling the Corners, we send wishes for all beings to abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. That is to live lives filled with community, connection, reciprocal blessings, loving kindness, and enduring respect and devotion to the sacred beauty of the living world. So if you wanna join me, you can call the corners uh, actually standing and moving and facing the directions, or just sitting and thinking, whichever's gonna be more comfortable and easy for you right now. Um, I'm gonna stay seated because of my uh, video set up here, but uh, when I call the corners, I like to actually start in the nearest cardinal direction to where the sun is now. Here in California, we've just passed evening twilight, so the sun is still essentially in the west. I'll go around the compass directions, following the path of the sun, then up and down. Um, then after acknowledging the tree beings that connect up and down, um, we then start with ourselves as the center and radiate out. So if you wanna follow along out loud, particularly in the repetitions of Abide and Agaya and Ubuntu, feel free. 
um, or just uh, think and feel your way through it. Think about your own location and send your wishes for a Gaia and Ubuntu out in that direction or in that space. May all beings to the West abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the North abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the East abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the South abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings above abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings below abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the great tree beings that connect above and below abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May each one of us abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings near each of us abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings in our watersheds abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings in our bioregions abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings of our continent abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings of the sunlit hemisphere of Earth abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. And may all beings in the dark of Earth's night abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all the beings belonging to Earth's beautiful, bountiful biosphere abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. Now, please sit comfortably and you can close your eyes if you want. We're approaching the equinox and I'll let you know as we get to that moment and invite you to focus very specifically at that point in time. But first, I just want you to take a moment to feel your connection to the earth below you. Two. Grounding and stabilizing Thank you. you. Feel your connection with the sky above you, filling you with light. Take a deep breath in, hold it for just a moment, and then exhale slowly and completely. Take another slow, deep breath in and hold it for a moment, savoring that feeling of breath nourishing your relaxed body. Then exhale gently and slowly, inviting any tension remaining in your body to leave with your breath. Continue taking deep, relaxing breaths as we focus in on this moment of the equinox. From an earthly perspective, the sun is directly overhead where it's solar noon. Off the coast of Sulawesi, Envision how it might look and feel right now with a brilliant midday sun directly over the warm Malacca Sea. If we stood together on a raft there, we would cast no shadow but directly beneath us. Just imagine taking the warmth and shimmering radiance of the sun overhead and 
transforming that energy into loving kindness, into Ubuntu and a Gaia. Imagine a Gaia and Ubuntu shining forth through you, from your heart, out into the world. Know that you're surrounded by community, that everyone meditating right now is there with you. That we are all radiating Ubuntu and Agaya. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya across the deep and sparkling immensity of the oceans. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to every place on earth touched by the light of this equinox sun. Together, we shine a Gaia and Ubuntu out to touch all those in the dark of night. Together, we shine a Gaia and Ubuntu all around the world, embracing and healing all beings of this earth with loving kindness. Together we shine the light of Ubuntu and Agaya across the universe from our beautiful little home world. Together, we inhale Ubuntu, feeling those inner connections, holding and embracing us. Together, we exhale a Gaia, sending out our joy and wishes for awe and wonder to all beings. We are inhaling Ubuntu and exhaling Agaya. Inhale Ubuntu and exhale, Agaya. Inhale, Ubuntu. And exhale, Agaya. Now, Inhale a Gaia and take in all that joy and wonder. And then exhale Ubuntu and send feelings of loving kindness out into the world. Inhale a Gaia and exhale Ubuntu. Inhale, Agaya. And exhale, Ubuntu.
now feel yourself as a connector between the air above your head and the earth beneath you. Recognize that our allies, the trees, are making this connection between the worlds of sky and soil even more strongly. Take a moment to thank the trees for showing us how to link heaven and earth together. Thank the trees and plants, the kelp and the phytoplankton, all the living green things of this earth for providing us with the oxygen we need to breathe in and for taking the carbon we release to build their own bodies. Thank them for this deep expression of loving reciprocity. This expression of Ubuntu between all beings. Now, Open yourself to a Gaia, to the joy, the wonder, and the profound beauty of this amazing planet we live on. Open yourself to gratitude for being able to participate in this complex dance of co-creation we call life on Earth. Now extend these experiences of Agaya and Ubuntu within you and offer them as a gift to the whole world. Feel yourself connected to the world. Wishing wellness to all.
when you're ready. Very gently, you may begin to open your eyes and bring yourself back to here and now. Feel yourself glide into a state of calm attention. Feel the energy of Ubuntu and Agaya that moved through you during the equinox, still enlivening and energizing you. Take just a moment to thank yourself for sharing in this meditation. Thank you for taking this step toward global wellness and awareness and for sharing this vision of a world abiding in Agaya and Ubuntu. Welcome back. Again, I'm so grateful that you uh, are joining this evening. And um, participating in this. Now I want to give us a chance to reflect on your experiences through the equinox meditation. Is there anyone who's ready, who wants to share something that came up for them during the meditation? Teresa, here. Go ahead, Teresa. Uh, I felt very calm, just a very calm feeling just washing over me through the entire thing. It just felt very, very calm and very comfortable and very loving. That's all I can explain in this. Is there anyone else who wants to say something? Um, I was just really glad um, to be guided. Um, although meditating is not new, um, something about what's going on has disrupted. You'd think I'd have more time, but somehow I, it's disrupted it. So it just was so helpful to do it together and, um, and to feel myself drop. And I also have this sense that um, there's a sort of correction happening, that there's a way the whole planet works. And we liked, I, I, I have wrong ideas that we're aloof from it. And I feel like in some ways, something what's happening with this coronavirus is a kind of correction to mm. stop everyone. I mean, what, what else could have done it to stop everyone and slow everyone down, you know, and bring everyone home. Um, so gratitude. Go ahead, Nancy. Want to say that friend speaks to my mind and the sense of connection with each of you and at the head of it when we spoke, resonating with what each person said, and then sharing that sense of being connected to the whole world, both women and especially men. So, very deeply healing. Nancy, could you hold your microphone a little closer? Having a little okay. trouble hearing you. Yeah, the, oh, here, let me try this. It's probably the microphone that's on your uh, headset or, oh. Yeah, the headset does, does not work well. Oh, the sound okay. does not project sound well. Much better. 
Okay. Thank you. Should I repeat it or were you able to hear me well enough? I think we got the gist, but if you want to say a little bit more, oh, Jennifer's saying, yeah, please repeat. Okay. First, I said that I'm a Quaker. One of our expressions is that friend speaks my mind. And I felt that especially about what Jennifer was saying at that moment, but I felt it about each, each person's sharing this evening. I've really resonated with and the sense of connection, even as we're separated, this pause to connect to the realities we're in is like a deeper connection. Mm -hmm. Even while we're physically more separate, we're paying more attention mm -hmm. to each other and with your help, especially tonight, Michelle, uh, connecting it to the planet, its living processes, and just going together into that deep space. And I just found it so healing. So thank you. Thank you all. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? So another question that we might speak to um, as I talked about the equinox, you know, one of the things that's true of these equinox moments all over the world, and I apologize, I, I'm, I'm hearing my neighbors a lot. I hope you guys aren't hearing too much of it. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, one of the things that's true of this equinox moment, even under, you know, normal equinox circumstances is that it's a time of very dynamic change and that seems to be amplified right now. So I guess one question I'd like to invite people to reflect on and respond to is um, how do we deal with this kind of dynamic change and that at the same time maintain the stillness we need to keep our own balance? What are the things that we need um, to stay balanced in this crisis and transformation? What can we offer each other? Well, after this meditation, I have this thought about <clears throat> getting outside and getting my feet on the ground mm -hmm. <laughs> and seeing some of those flowers because I know, I know they're out right now and um, there's nothing wrong with being outside. It's not like we have to stay in our houses like... <laughs> we're not doing duck and cover here, you know? Um, so just get out there under the trees and give those birds a listen. Um, I feel kind of inspired by the group and also by the meditation to um, absorb, absorb some vitamin D and get into the fresh air and, and let the, let Agaya speak to me and the Ubuntu of this group is guiding me there. So thank you. Anyone else want to speak? There, go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, I keep thinking back to the last time this country went through something remotely close in terms of the economy having so many problems. And one of the things that got us through that was people helping with food kitchens and really, you know, energy is the, is the foundation of everything. And we get our energy from food uh, more directly than anything else. And so I've been thinking the last few days, uh, as I saw that I was going to be back in California soon, uh, thinking about how do we start to plan now and organize now to have large-scale soup kitchens kind of a thing if we should get to that point where food is, is really an issue. I don't want to get caught flat-footed with that, and I think that's very important to bring community together. So. Oh, that's a really good one. Anyone else have have thoughts about things that – help keep us in balance or help us be effective in these times?
So I feel a sense of authenticity uh, that's, again, the ecological webs of life that a lot of times are hidden intentionally or unintentionally, and that life inherently is full of fragility along mm -hmm. with the, the dynamic safety that comes whenever we are together and in community and able to feel like we're, we're keeping that, um, the danger at bay or the things which really make our autonomic nervous system go into overdrive with the, the cortisol, the stress hormones. And so I think now is a large scale reminder that that is a part of the, the balance that is inherent in bringing us into being and helping us to, to root ourselves in the reality of the earth and do our best to pass that truth on to each other and then to whatever is to come in the future, which we can only, uh, only try to grasp and try to, to join hands or more hearts at this point to ensure that the sacredness of life and all of its fragility and dynamism is carried forward. Uh, as as authentically and truly as possible. Nancy. Oh, and microphone again. <laughs> Answer fully or even directly the question you asked earlier. I spoke of the opportunity now, but I also need to say that I've been um, allowing myself to relax those processes that Nathan was just talking about into a sense of um, letting go and passing on. I'm very mindful the notion that the triage in Italy at this point requires them to let people my age die. So I've been trying to make peace with my own death, even as the young people around me are so lovingly concerned for me. That was part of what made me conscious of it. I don't know that I would have thought of it particularly. But we are an aged generation. It is not it, it, it's right for us to be passing from this plane and letting the new energies of really amazingly passionate and insightful young leaders coming into their own and knowing that that is how life is supposed to work and just meditating on that a lot and letting my fear turn into release and gratitude for being part of this living process that you're helping us connect with throughout all the, all the layers of life. Hmm. <coughs> So I, I also want to add on to really just to, to more or less say the exact same thing that Nancy said. And uh, it's to just that in the past few days, few weeks, I've been looking at uh, the statistics that are to come probably of places where so many people will actually have to be let to die, be it young or old, because they don't have even the, the smallest uh, equipment, amount of equipment that would be needed. I saw somewhere that the country of Sierra Leone has only one functional respirator. And so if they have even as many as 10 people who need that kind of life support, 
they cannot get it. So it is to hear and now be thankful that there is a slight chance that so many more of us would actually get that opportunity while others cannot even imagine or dream that that is even possible. And I see someone has joined or rejoined, uh, just says iPhone turtle. Um, welcome. I'm not, not sure who this is. Um, so we're sitting with this idea of being in a time of really dynamic change and wondering how we how we stay in balance with that how we deal with these very um deep and real and um frightening and painful things that that we are experiencing or anticipating Wow, um, I'm sitting with that right now and I'm taking a lot in. Um, does anyone else want to want to step in, have something they move to say? Hi, yes. Um, okay. I, uh, as far as like keeping balance, my body's really been asking for a salt bath, like to physically ground me pretty much five nights a week um, for the past month, almost two months. And I don't know where I would be without it. Um, it really, not only does it, you know, the magnesium from the Epsom salt calm my muscles, but it just gives me time to think and to reflect and to just calm down and be with myself and be present because if I can't do that then my mind just kind of spins out of control with the things that I can't control um it gives me time to think about what I can and um generally that has to do with me and myself and how I conduct myself in these times thank you Is there anyone else who wants to speak into this? I think a lot of it has to do with being present. Um, your mind can really go into the future and, and give you much more fear um, than you can imagine. And listening to the television day and night or they project and project and project and, and present more fear. Yeah. And I know that it is a scary time, but I also feel that, you know, your nervous system can only take so much. And I feel that if you can get away from it uh, and try to stay present and try to stay in nature and try to balance yourself as much as possible, um, meditate when you can, um, get your heart, get in your heart space and do your breathing. The breathing can just really calm you down and put you in your right space. And I think that helps so much. And I think that can really help you out during these times. I think it helps immensely. And stay away from TV as much as you possibly can. I can't, cannot say that enough. Wow. Thanks. Okay. So before we leave, I want to move us into one other question that's really our, our 
going forth in addition to this um, the advice from Teresa and um, considering what's going on in the world, what's going on for others, what we need to do to be prepared to make sure that we can take care of as many people as we can take care of. Um, but this is, we are now in spring. Um, and so like those emerging flowers and leaves, are there things that you're ready to have start growing more vigorously? Things that, that you have thought about engaging or just starting to engage that you want to bring forth a little bit more strongly to bring more Agaya and Ubuntu into the world? Let me just say that having the conversation, these are difficult conversations to have with someone who's not already identified as, um, as uh, being one of us, quote unquote, not to separate or anything, but um, so, you know, just being really diligent about having a short conversation about how we might best approach this and how we might benefit by coming together as a community and um, not just letting people, not just leaving people to their own fears and their own uh, uh, programming. Try to break people out of the programming a little bit. So for me, with a background in human health, but with a personal conviction, deep personal truth and story that highly prioritizes or attempts to maximally be in tune with the ecological identity. It's a time that a lot of the thinking that I've done and a lot of times that I've had to bite my tongue knowing that the audience was just not there in the anthropocentric bubble uh, that that previous world offered. So I'll do my best to rise up and, and not impose my stories, but to remind people that these are very real vulnerabilities that if we were paying attention, we, we knew that the destruction of the natural world, uh, accelerating and so extensive, predisposed us to these types of pandemics. And so somehow leaning into or welcoming, trying to honor our ecological identity as much as possible as we look to the root causes of some of the problems and equities and justices in the current world and do our best to join together to, to build uh, deeply durable and sustainable systems that at least make it less likely that this happens and when and if it does that the vulnerable people who are not responsible for that that extent of destruction and inequity are not the ones who are unfairly cheated of their ability to to live this precious life Nancy Nancy, um, we're not hearing you at all now. Don't hear you. Okay. I'm sorry, Nancy, we're not, we're not hearing you. Do you want to try to, um, Type in the chat. Oh, that reminds me here. I was going to uh, put the link to, I had talked about the, um, one of the current Nova Sutras projects that we're doing in partnership with um, Amazon for Amazon. Uh, we've just started a new petition um, before uh, all of the news was dominated by 
coronavirus related things, a lot of science was coming out that says that we are very close to a tipping point at the end for the Amazon rainforest. And so um, we've started this new petition uh, to encourage um, Amazon and Jeff Bezos to um, use their billions of dollars that they say they're going to use to fight climate change um, to tackle this one very urgent problem, which has major repercussions in terms of climate. So that's, uh, that's one of my spring projects is to, to keep that rolling and get that expanded um, and working uh, as the year goes on uh, to work on the other two major equatorial rainforests as well, including uh, Sundaland, we were talking about, you know, Sulawesi where the, the equinox um, subsolar point is what they call that, the place where the sun's directly overhead that today um, is part of that Sundaland uh, rainforest ecosystem. Um, and that, <laughs> That place may actually, there, there is some speculation that the coronavirus came out of um, poaching for uh, pangolins in Southeast Asia for uh, export to Chinese markets, because that's uh, one of the possible sources of the coronavirus. And I haven't looked to see if, if the genetics have confirmed that yet, um, but it's they're endangered, it's illegal to trade in them, and yet uh, the black market in pangolins from Southeast Asia up into China is huge because it's considered a, a delicacy and very prestigious to serve for Chinese New Year. Um, these little adorable uh, ant eatery guys. Pangolins. Anyway. Um, I used to work in Southeast Asian rainforests and I adore pangolins, so. What are they called, Peng what are they? Uh, pangolin, P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N. It's, it's a type of anteater, essentially. They're called scaly anteaters sometimes. Oh. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, thank you. Mm. Um, uh, Nancy says she's gonna send a note out explaining uh, what what she's up to and yeah i can um what i'll do is uh based on the people who registered i should be able to i think send a follow-up email to everybody um with that information if that's okay with you nancy does anyone else have things that they want to share new projects that they're working on as we Kind of go forth into the spring here. I need to jump off here, but I want to thank you all very much. Right, we are we are coming up on time here, uh, so feel free if you if you thank need you. to go. Um, thank you so much for being here. Oh, let me just quickly share um, a couple more things. Um, our next meditation, uh, like this, will be on the cross quarter, which is May fourth local time. Um, I've just. Just before this call started, I set up a place where you can register for that if you want to go ahead and do that. And Very you can learn more at novasutras.org. Go to novasutras.org uh, slash events for that and find out about more ways to help us out. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, it's my it's pleasure. Really good to to see everybody and um, and I'm happy to keep it open for a little bit longer if people have more to say, but if you need to jump off, feel free. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Oh, Nancy, I can see you're talking, but now we can't hear you at all and I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, so 
um, let's see, I'm going to unmute everybody who's still on. And if we want to just, um, again, if there's, if there's anything more that people are feeling they want to say right now, that's great. Um, and if that's not the case, then I'm going to ask if we want to just do one quick go around uh, with just a quick blessing and thanks. Um, so anyone who wants to start that. Just to sort of say farewell. Well, I just wanted to say um, gratitude to, um, I believe it's Nightingale who was sharing the information about um, Sierra Leone, which was not on my radar and um, is very distressing. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, everybody I know of <laughs> has um, older folks in their lives that we love and are watching this thing come. Um, and um, yeah, so I just, I can't imagine what it is like uh, to not even have the little veneer, <laughs> the little, the little veneer that we have that some people will have insurance or access or something, and um, uh, so just appreciate that information and um, an insight and um, a call in my heart to uh, keep increasing my awareness. Anyone else? I just want to say thank you. Um, I didn't know I was going to do this tonight. And um, as I shared earlier, it's been a little bit of a tough time for me. And as soon as I realized it was like a video thing and we were all going to be chatting, I was like, oh no, <laughs> I have to interact with people. But I'm so happy I did. And I'm so happy that I met all of you. And during it, I was just thinking of what a I just loved everybody in here and <laughs> that what a beautiful group of people and souls to come together. And I felt so comfortable with all of these strangers. And um, I'm so thankful, Michelle, that you put this on and just for everybody, Jennifer, Nancy, and Nathan and Nightingale, Marisa, um, that was actually my mom, Teresa's my mom, and she did it too um, from her house. And I hadn't been able to see her since, you know, we started social distancing and oh. Um, because just some health issues. So um, thanks for listening and thanks for holding space and just thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> I have to work right. tomorrow. Yeah, that's very right fair. Good night. <laughs> all right. Good night. <laughs> oh, thank you all so much. So really quickly in the spirit of honoring diversity, I'll speak a little Swahili and say Asante Nisana, which says thank you all very much, and Tuko Pamoja, we are together. Tuko Pamoja. Ooh, I like we, I would just like to say thank you all for the love. I felt it all through, and there's no better thing than that tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, Marixa, do you wanna step in and say goodbye? And uh, whoever's on iPhone Turtle, if you want to come in. I'm actually with Mary when she was saying that she joined, um, not planning it. And it was really nice to, to be together with everybody and listen to what everyone had to say. And the meditation was beautiful as well. I felt very calm and um, I feel great right now. I am going to bed feeling all the love and tomorrow morning I'll get up and do it all again go meditation and 
and feel the bliss mm. all throughout the day. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, may your coming days and weeks still be filled with Agaya and Ubuntu. And I look forward to the next time that we get to talk. Thank you for this night. It was just so good to see everybody. Just so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Love to you all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye